I won't be before you long on this morning. Hallelujah. My topic today is the midnight experience. Everyone knows that the midnight is like the darkest place of your life. Gloomy. Discouraging place. Yes. Feels like a low place. Come on, Apostle. It feels like God is nowhere around. And you might have been calling on God and, and you praying and, and you ain't seen God answer. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. It yes. feels like everything around you just dried up. And God, I'm suffering here. The midnight experience. Amen. Anybody ever had a midnight experience before? Yes. yes. <sighs> it's devastating. Sometimes we don't even know if we can bounce back from it. It hits you so hard, you be like, I don't know if I got the strength to get up. Right? And then all of a sudden, you sitting there saying, God, it's call, it's put me in the heart of somebody. Ain't nobody calling you, praying for you. You reaching out, and ain't nobody available. Because God is taking you through a midnight experience. Amen? But David said, I've learned to encourage myself. When nobody else was able to encourage me. And David says, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And it's going to work in my favor. Listen, learn to prophesy to yourself. When there's no one else around, and it's a dark and gloomy place, and it looks like God ain't answered, but if you begin to tell yourself late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn this thing around, and it's going to work in my favor, then all of a sudden, you'll feel supernatural strength. You ain't nothing change around you. All you know that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly all that I can ask to think. That's enough for me to praise him in my midnight hour. That's enough to say. It's turning around. Tell your neighbor it's turning around because the breaking of day is here. The breaking of day is here. God will change your situation in a twinkling of an eye. Don't you get comfortable with your struggling place. Because honey, it's about to turn around in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. Elder Rich, I'm going to need you to, to read this scripture because I feel this this morning. And I don't know about you, but don't you get stuck in that dark place. Amen. Because the minute you learn to bless the Lord in the dark place, there comes the breaking of day. Yeah. Let's go to the scripture. I feel the Lord. See, you can be tired in your body. And you might be going through all these and keep pouring out. But when you learn to lean on the strength of the Lord, his super will touch your natural. They say, you ain't tired. I ain't tired yet. I feel supernatural virtue today. My spirit too busy running after him. When you running after God, you ain't got tired to be tired because all you know is you're running. Let's go to Acts 16, verse 25 through 33. 
And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Stop right there. They prayed at midnight. Not only did they pray, they praised him. In the midnight experience, they gave God glory. They didn't look at the situation and say, woe me, I'm stuck, there's no coming out. They say, now unto him who is able. And they began to sing praises. Because they knew God was a deliverer. God ever deliver you out of something that you thought you couldn't get out of? You called everybody and there was no help. Because God ain't letting men take his glory. We want somebody to pray for us, somebody to encourage us. And, we, and God said, encourage yourself because I'm in you. Amen. I'm not giving this credit to nobody. I'm going to put you in a situation that can't no man take you out. Look around for help and you can't find it. Well, he said, I'm going to get the glory out of this. Come on, let's go, Lord Father. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. Oh, stop it. Can we go back? Did that say suddenly? Yes. That mean instantly? That mean in a twinkling of an eye, the situation began to change. When they started singing praises unto the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And the jailhouse doors start opening. And the chains start loosening, right? Mm -hmm. And did it not say the doors were open and everyone bound was loosed? Your midnight experience ain't about you. It's to loose those that are around you. Let's go, little father. You mean to tell me, God, you afflict? Oh, hey. Wait a minute. Go, wait a minute. Stay right there. Don't go nowhere. You mean to tell me that I was praying for you to deliver my family members, and I've been praying for others to get loosed, and then all of a sudden I got bound while I was praying for others to get free? So you mean to tell me that you had to give me a midnight experience to get them loose? See, God's ways ain't your ways. And God said, yeah, I got to. I got to put you in the place where they see that you bound because it ain't what you say to them. It's what they see demonstrated. And the keepers of the prison awakened out of their sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. Now wait a minute. The man who locked him up put him in prison, made sure he stayed bound. When he had the opportunity to flee and charge him, guess what? He didn't retaliate. Did y'all catch that one? Uh -huh. He ain't retaliated. He says, no, no, no. We about to minister. <laughs> Don't you kill yourself because we still here. See, what we do is, we want to retaliate. Uh-huh. You shouldn't have locked me up. My God did this. No, God ain't boastful like that. He's humble and merciful. Hallelujah. And then we want to retaliate when he already told you that you don't fight flesh and blood. They understood the assignment. Go ahead. Then he's called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, 
what must I do to be saved? Well, 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 well. What must I do to be saved? Let me take you to another scripture really quick. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdoms, but in demonstration of the spirit of God and of power. It was with what? Demonstration of the spirit and of power. So you mean to tell me that salvation came not from speech, but the salvation came because there was a demonstration of the power of God. So did you catch that? Many of you trying to tell people about God who is not hearing you or your enticing words or your, or your, or your speech of saying things, but God says they want to see the power because it's the power that draws men to repentance. Amen. So God said, you said, God, use me. Get the glory out of my life. Anybody ask God for that? You want God to use you? Raise your hand high if you want God to use you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do, do you want God to get the glory out of your life? Raise Amen. your hand real high. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you what you just signed up for. To be persecuted by men. To be mishandled by men. Because those that suffer, those that reign with me, shall what? Suffer with me. Whenever you get ready to get the glory, there comes a suffering. You can't house the anointing and walk in power and demonstration and don't experience the suffering. Amen. So here are these men of God operating in glory because they suffered. And in their suffering, they didn't leave God. Because we as the church of today, if God don't answer a prayer, you ready to throw in the towel. If God didn't do it this way, you want to get, I'm not going to church today because God didn't answer me. Well, you are not qualified to carry the glory. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to give up because I got all this suffering around me. Everything is happening. God just hates me. Get delivered. I'm so discouraged. You're discouraged because you haven't been with God. Because in your tribulations, you still can find joy. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went in the fire and the fire didn't consume them because they learned how to dance in the fire. They rejoiced in the Lord. In the fire, they gave God glory. At all times, I will bless the Lord. Even when you throw me in the fire, I'm going to magnify your name, God. This ain't about a bless me, God. And he said, if you all about blessing and all you want is my hand and don't want to know who I am, I'll remove my hand from you. Because I ain't no pimp. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So now they said, they sung praises unto the Lord. In your midnight state. God will remove everyone from around you. And you mad at people because you said you wasn't there for me. That spirit right there. You wasn't there for me. Who said that we're obligated to you? That's a form of control. We like to manipulate and control our friends and put chains on them. Mm. Oh, the chain breaker here today. People are not obligated.
dedicated to you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? People got assignments because they belong to God, and he ordered their steps and direct their path, not you. People can't be free to move in God because they got to be offended by you. Y'all better get away from that. That's witchcraft. It's manipulation. Amen? Amen. Now, how did I get there? I don't know. I need to go. <laughs> I, forgot what was. I forgot where I was at. But nevertheless, how did I get there? Paul, Paul. Demonstration of power. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Amen. So this is what you got to realize is that you got to learn to encourage yourself. That's what we were. Encourage yourself. Because it's not that they're not there for you. It's that God moved them from you. Because you were thinking they were your resource when he's the resource. So God said, when you get that thing twisted, I got to show you that they were just instruments that I used in that season. So he said, I moved them because I wanted you to press in. And I'm trying to give you your own experience with me, but you can't get your own experience because you're still leaning on the arms of man. Paul and Silas, couldn't nobody get them out of the prison. But then when they began to magnify the Lord, not only did they came out, but all those around them came out. Did you not catch that? They was afflicted that others may be set free. Your midnight experience got nothing to do with you. It's what's attached to you. Listen, they didn't go, the, the Bible didn't say they was in there preaching. The Bible said they was in there singing praises unto the Lord. And then the power showed up. And the power was able to testify that there's power in the Almighty. Then they said, well, what must I do? See, people don't want to hear what you got to say. They want to know how you rock it in your midnight season. Are you still telling me God good when I'm looking at all this hell around you? I done seen you lose your house, your car, your ass, your children. I done watched you go under and you still glorifying God? You still got a praise in your lip? Oh, I know you say for real now. Because you still got the same praise you got before you got in the fire. Yeah. And they said, then all of a sudden, they saw a shift come. And then they saw you come out on top and don't know how you got there. Then all of a sudden, they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, how can I get the God you got? Oh, my gosh, I see he for real now. Because some of us want to tell people about God, but then we act like God ain't got no power. You can't witness Jesus and tell people he a deliverer, he's a miracle worker, he got power. And the minute you afflicted, you go to the same people. Walking in doubt and unbelieving. They saying, well, where's your Holy Ghost that you was dancing all around your church? You invited me to church. You on social media saying this. And now you're going through what I'm going through. Catch that one? The one that was crying and praying to you, I need you to have you praying the house down. Oh, you encouraged them, girl, God got you. He ain't going to leave you in this. And I command a miracle, and you just going in. And now you touched what they touched with. And the prayer word said, where you at? Where you at? Right? They need to see your praise come forth when you are afflicted like them because the outcome about to be different. <laughs> the outcome is going to determine your praise. Come on. So what you saying, Apostle? 
You can be in a midnight hour and be stuck for seasons because you didn't know how to use the keys that he gave you to get out. And that was praise. You didn't learn how to praise him in the fire. You didn't learn how to praise him in your dark place. So you had to stay there a little bit longer because you can't stop complaining. You can't stop whining. You can't stop down talking to yourself. God says, stay right there till you catch the revelation that when you praise me, I open the door. When you praise me, I show up. When you praise me, I become the deliverer. When you praise me, I show you a miracle worker. He says, but until you are able to know that I am God, all by myself. You're going to sit right there until you get an encounter with me. I've been in this for so long. Why are you praising God one minute and the next minute you're not? Because you must be consistent in this. Now don't, don't, don't get me twisted with this. We do need people to encourage us. But they can never take the place of God. I can't take the place of God. We cannot. I'm going to call my pastor. Well, Jesus said he's the good shepherd. Ain't that what he said? Well, my pastor didn't return my text or call, but he said, call on me in the day of trouble. And I will answer because the marvelous not. <laughs> Amen. He said, I would never leave you and forsake you in dark places and not come and see about you. You got to catch the revelation that God wants your praise. Now, I told them to cut the music off. And I told you guys to begin to praise the Lord. Y'all were praising the Lord without music. How many of you felt the breakthrough? Paul and Silas ain't had no music, y'all. They, they were singing from their hearts, from the inside. That makes the difference. They didn't have music to pump them up, to intensify, intensify the atmosphere, or to even make your flesh jerk like you got the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you got him for real, you will be able to bless him without anything enhancing you. Amen? I ain't got those keys at my house. Hallelujah. I ain't got those drums at my house. I do, but they, but I, I, but Taj can't use them like that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But I got to dance in my house when it's just me and him in my house. I got a hallelujah in my house when it's just me and him in my house. And when I feel discouraged, I still got to dance because I remember you brought me out before. You'll do it again because you're the same God that changed not. again because you change not. So my question to you today, has God ever brought you out of something that nobody can help you get out? If so, you need to bless him for what you into now knowing he the same God. yourself. He the same God. Same 
God. He changed not. He changed not. Same God. Same God. If he spares you then, he gonna spare you now. If he made a way then, he gonna make a way now. Cause he make ways out of no ways. Hallelujah. 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 Same God. Same God. Come on and take your seats. He the same God, Mona Boo. He the same God. I gotta tell y'all testimony real quick. Have you seen? See, that's why you gotta get some experience with God. You need some encounters with God. Cause you gotta remind him you the same God that changed not. And if you ever got it, he did it before, then you can bring him into a now situation. going to give you two because it's for two different people I don't know but I'm going to tell you my testimony and those of you that came to hear me speech as, speak yesterday or might be at the event you heard it but I'm going to tell it again because there's some here who didn't hear it but I'm going to tell you it's the same God amen, amen. so y'all know my baby Sparrow you know Sparrow was born less than a pound you know, the doctor said we never handle the baby. Like, y'all know the story, right? So God did what men never saw done through Sparrow. They followed his case. Sparrow, give her half his fourth birthday. They said we never work with a baby less than a pound. I said, no worries, God did. <laughs> I prayed for the doctors. They let me pray. The Holy Ghost showed up. And I prayed for the babies in the nick where Sparrow was. They got all came out while Sparrow was there. So they didn't really expect Sparrow to make it. But Sparrow's mom named him Sparrow because she said, I always want God to keep his eye on me. For his eye is on the Sparrow. So then, yesterday I got a call from my son, FaceTime me. He was a little stressed. He said, Mom, Sparrow took his trade out. He's unresponsive. They're trying to resuscitate him. The same God who did it before did it again. himself. But just imagine why my son was in that little midnight space. If he didn't realize that God did it before, his boy might not be here today if he had a pity party. But my son said, not so. 
You can't let your circumstance speak to you. You got to speak to your circumstance. Almighty yeah. yeah. oh, Sparrow is a mighty arrow to the kingdom of darkness. They said Sparrow would not be able to go to school or do anything. Sparrow is now registered for school. Save God! He said, I'll do exceedingly all and now unto him who is what out of riches is. reports around. Yeah. He's well able. Well able. Save God. So those of you know, that I got a son that got in trouble. Because he don't listen to his mama. Got a prophet in his own house. Lord have mercy. And don't listen to the mama. But God said, I'm going to give him his own experience with me. Amen? And so, my son, those of you know, <clears throat> that God spared his life. Those of y'all know that story. Okay. So then God told me, he's knocking on the jailhouse doors and I'm going to let him in. And I told him, I said, you begging because you taking grace and mercy for granted. Because you be like, huh, my mom a prayer warrior. I can do what I want. No, sir. You keep trying to keep leaning on the prayers of your parents, you're going to be in trouble. Because when you become grown, God going to treat you like you grown. So you was in that covering when you was just a child. But then now you think you can dab and stuff that you know you ain't supposed to touch. And God said, I'm going to show you. Yeah, yeah. Right? My mom a prophet. You don't know who my mom anointed. Yeah, your mom is, but you better get your own anointing. But let me tell you, so I said, God, he ain't built for that. I said, he think he is, but God, he ain't built for that. And so we went to this event at Jennifer Castle. She invited us to this Christmas dinner, and he went because that's her spiritual baby. She's going to tell you quick. She watched him grow up. That's her spiritual baby. And this prophet came in, and he said to him, God's cuffing you. He's hiding you because he's protecting. And he said, God says, no worries, he's going to protect you. So I want to tell you that God told me, I'm the same God who spared his life, who's able to protect his life outside of your company. Lord, have mercy. Yes, he is. I'm the same God. If I was able to do that, what makes you think I can't protect him here? Lord, have mercy. Well, the Lord did exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask to think. Because all of a sudden, that little prophetic anointing started waking up. But then all of a sudden, he sends me this prayer list. Wait. And let me tell you how to pray. And make sure you add this. I said, wait a minute. It wasn't just pray for me. I got to give you details to the prayer. Come on now. <laughs> then he hooks up with a pastor. I said, well, God, you can do what I couldn't do. Come on now. God will do what you can't do. You need to trust your loved ones in the hands of God. So 
had a pastor come to say to him, I don't know, but you supposed to walk with me. So the pastor got a jailhouse ministry. Lord have mercy. So my son said, Mom, look him up. He a real pastor for real. He ain't a fake pastor. You know I know. I've been raised in church. I know real pastor. Mom, listen, we got, we got Bible study. We got prayer meetings. We got Sunday services. And he said, it'd be good. And I said, what are you in jail for? <laughs> 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 he said, he in jail for fraud for SBA loans. And I said, Okay, he said, but your yeah, mom, it wasn't his fault. This worked like that, this and then the other. He said, look him up. So I looked him up. I couldn't wait for my son to call me back. I said, listen, son, this ain't the first offense. <laughs> he said, what? He said, what? But nevertheless, I said all that to say this. Even though the pastor was in jail, he was still called by God. And because he went and let go of things he knew he wasn't supposed to touch, he still had to suffer the consequence. That's right. And God still got the glory in the jailhouse. So he said, listen, listen, connect me to your mom. What her church like? What they like? And I was saying, he ain't going to preach at my church. <laughs> No, but I'm saying, not, not that I won't. <laughs> so my son said, Mom, listen, you need to do this, 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 how you get this. I said, listen. I said, son, listen to me clearly. You're not going to come and give me advice from convicts that is already in jail and going to tell me how to get money out here. I ain't desperate. <laughs> I said, God. Renew his mind that he doesn't sit and get deposits for convicts and come out and go back in because he's chasing that money. Right. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me, right? Okay. So I'm about to be done. Because my boy going to preach. And prophesy. And prophesy. Come on, come on. And let me tell you this, don't worry, y'all know his story, judge him where y'all want to judge him, but he going to be the very one to lay hands and cast the devil out of you. Amen. Because if you don't know, God used those that was from the streets. You better bet it. Jesus had an unchurched ministry. And everywhere he got that followed him came from the streets. That's why we got the church of the unchurched. Right. So my son went in, and now he's business-minded. He started doing business, creating stuff, and he's on the inside, and we on the outside with access and have not got half of the place where we still talking while they moving. He sent me all this stuff. I said, legit, legit. He done fixed his credit. He done got business credit cards. He done got all this stuff because he says what? I'm taking my desire and I'm going to turn around and it's going to work for my good. And guess what he said, y'all? I'm almost done. I was a proud on this one. I got to brag on it. Getting around these guys and they're talking to his mom, listen. You need to teach me. I need to sit down. Because you're doing everything I wanted to do. I was trying to tell you that the whole time. <laughs> but you wouldn't listen to me. But it took those inside to say, your mom did this, your mom did that. Because those you know, I had a trucking business. My son wants a trucking business. I no longer have it. I don't want it. Right? But he would say, teach me. But he couldn't hear me before. But God had to put him in a place to now he can hear me. So as you keep crying out to your kids, talking and talking, they can't hear you. God got to put him in a place where they can hear you. And it might not be incarcerated, but it might be away from your voice. 
Because kids are different with their parents. I'm like, I don't even know why I'm here, but I'm, I'm about to be in, I'm about to be done, but I need to help you. Kids are different around their parents. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You ever babysit a kid? We got a camp. Am I telling the truth? With the kids in the camp, they are excellent with the teachers. The minute the parent shows up, we don't know who that child is. All of a sudden, <laughs> what? They transform like a transformer. Why? Because they're so comfortable with your voice, your presence, that they want you to cater to them, and they want to be babies, and they can't do nothing for themselves because you keep doing it for them. Y'all ready? You do everything for them that you cripple them. That's right. Right? But when they're, at, when they're in the camp, they're independent. They do stuff that you don't even know they can do. Why? Because you're too busy shelter them, and they can't hear your voice because your voice is a pacifier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I said I was almost done. I am. So let me tell you, for those of you, yes, said y'all heard this because I talked about it. Taj has a room, and we, we always have to go clean this room, right? And I said, one, one day, a couple weeks ago, I said, Taj, go clean your room. Taj cleaned his room. I was thoroughly amazed. I didn't know Taj knew how to clean his room. He organized it, cleaned it. I knew nobody was in the house but me and him. Taj, who cleaned your room? I did, me, Mom. I said, wow. I didn't even know he could do it because we were always doing it for him. Right? Now, listen. So then... This time I said, Taj, go clean your room. I can't. I can't clean it. I can't do it. I said, you gonna clean that room, Taj, because I already know you can do it. I can't, me, Mom. It's just too hard. I need help. I said, you're not getting help. You're going to clean this room. So he went to Mina, and he said, I need you to help me clean my room. I can't do it. Please. Right? I turned, and he says, you don't love me. You don't love me. I turned around and rebuked the spirit. I said, you know how to clean your room. You will clean your room. And we're, you're not going nowhere until you clean your room. You're not getting no iPad, no cell phone, no TV time until you clean this room. Right? And then, you don't love me. I rebuked that from YouTube spirit. Right? That's right? He was taught that. Your kids now, how many kids now when, when you don't get one day one, you don't love me? That's a spirit rebuke it. That's to rock you to sleep so they don't have to obey you. You can be like, oh, baby, yes, I do. Mommy loves you. The Bible says if you love them, you'll chastise them. So let YouTube teach your kids how to manipulate you. The minute I said I rebuked the YouTube spirit, where you got that from, he said, you want my in there clean that room? <laughs> That's when I realized I was no longer talking to Taj. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this stuff is going into the gateways, and you're letting them because they're out of your hair. Your kids can do more than what you know, and you are enabling them. Get them out of your presence and watch what they do. Because it's all my baby. Oh, my baby. I got to be careful because I feel like that too. Because I love my grandson real bad. Real <laughs> too bad. <laughs> I had to go away, and I was saying, God, what is Taj doing? Taj is living life without you. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> Amen? So if you were blessed today, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> you got to ask the Lord to help you to train your kids and to equip them. 
I have to ask the Lord to help me not to give in. Because there's a soft spot on our hearts for our children. But you can't let them be raised manipulating people. Once they start learning to master and manipulate you, they're going to start manipulating the world to get their way. Amen? Amen. If you are blessed by the word, give God one more hand clap of praise. If you're standing and need a prayer of anything on today, I want to ask that you come to the altar. But if you're under the sound of my voice, and if you never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, I'm going to ask that you come. And I feel I need to say this in every service because I found out adults think they saved because they've been going to church all their life. They went to, they went to a vacation Bible school. They went to church service with their grandmoms. But they never came into the place where they invited Jesus in. And they never went over the sinner's prayer. And if that's you, you're not saved today. In order to be saved, you must invite him in. And you must confess with your mouth. If you say, I'm not sure if I did that. I haven't done that. Come to make sure you're good with him. It's good to know and then better not to know. It's better to know than not to know. Amen. How old are you? Nine? I don't think I've seen you. You're ten? Oh, man. man. Yeah. Did you enjoy the word today? I saw your spirit eating. Men of God. Amen. Amen. You're going to serve the Lord real early. Yes. God's hand is on your life. Response. My reason. 